Okay, t- uh, Tom, thanks very much for joining us in the studio today. Um, congratulations on your season cup win. Thanks so much. I just begin by asking you, how much of a boost was it to win against UUJ, the tournament favourites, in the opening rounds? Yeah, I suppose um, it was absolutely huge because, like, while we knew ourselves that we were kind of a capable bunch, but um, I think from everyone looking in, we were written off um, when the draw was made initially. Like, there was kind of oohs and ahs in Crow Park when GCU came out and then Jordanstown. And um, do you know, it was kind of it's what you want is the big clashes. So we we went around, went about kind of winning, I suppose, in the hard way. And you know, it was great to like I, the northern teams. Well, they they had a couple of big names. Well, Jordan's in particular, but um, yeah, I suppose like our group kind of. D- while lads are saying like that, you wouldn't recognise too many of the names, but a lot of them are main players for their for their um like Division Two or Division Three teams. While Jordan's Town would have had the few all stars, so we kind of. Like while everyone blows up Jordan Sound like DC, we were strong enough for that, like you know. So absolutely, yeah. and did that put some sort of a pressure, a sort of expectation on you? If you knock out the favourites, are you guys install the favourites, or did you just guys carry on, take it one game at a time? Yeah, no, I don't. I think um, I generally, I, I don't know if it's the Irish people's nature just to be kind of, you know, we like being underdogs and stuff. So we never really like, like we, we wouldn't be an overly cocky punch at all. It's just we kind of. We've got all good friends and have a laugh together and go out together and and um, it kind of like we just took one game at a time. I think Marys we played Marys in um, the league and the league final, so we we knew that they were an organised group and had something good going as well. So we couldn't really under un, or underestimate them, I suppose. You know, so we knew that on top like Jordanstown, while they had the big names, Marys were really the organised group and kind of similar to ourselves, going quietly about their business. So. I suppose there was no real way to be reason to be hyping ourselves up when we knew something was ahead of us. Like absolutely, and you mentioned Mary's there, and you mentioned you Jay as well. Did it affect the performance at all, considering that he's had to play away from home a lot of the time, and then the semi final and the final went down in Cork as well? Yeah. Did that impact on the performance or? I don't know. I'd say it's, it's sometimes it's just nicer, Joe. You, know, you kind of you get your stuff ready the night before, all head off in the bus, and you're sure you're having the crack. Well, having the crack on the way back, probably that's where we got to know each other so well. Like, um, definitely after the league final. Um, but yeah, like you kind of get into your routines there with that, and I suppose there's no pressure. There, well, there's less pressure going up to a place like Mary's where you're playing in a small, tight pitch or Jordanstown with all their crowd. Whereas when you're home in DC, you probably have that added expectation or weight on yourself just to perform and force things. But yeah, when you're going up there, just kind of a weight off your shoulders whatever happens happens you know there's more of a freedom yeah. there yeah, absolutely what do you reckon was the biggest difference I suppose between this year and last year's Sigerson team was it a kind of a change in style of play training was it the players were different or what do you think was the turning factor that I, drove us on I'd to I'd say there was, there was a few things definitely just I suppose you, you can look at injuries as well like last year we kind of had a disjointed kind of build up towards the the UCD game and like it kind of affected us as a result but definitely the pitching we like they got the 3G pitch in Clares or the Astro in Clares yeah. and they got the floodlight so that meant we were able to train down there the whole time and you know like say if second years most second years don't have cars in college so that meant if the year before if we were training down in like Vincent's or somewhere or off in Ballymun you know you were like lads were having to get onto guys who they didn't know for lifts so that was kind of that led to like in- decreased numbers so when it's in Clares everyone can just bolt down and you have massive numbers of training so that like in towards the end of the year we ended up having an intermediate squad and senior squad but everyone came to the weekend because there was no like everyone was training so you couldn't really pick or distinguish between who was senior and intermediate like because everyone had committed like so and the quality of the team that was there the likes of uh, Ennis Smith uh, yeah. Donny Smith you had Conor McGrainer in there as well yeah. they were kind of perceived as the leaders or the mm. standout players each and every game who would you have considered were the leaders in that squad do you think there was any standout players I actually couldn't like you like while there were obviously there were standout players with end and guys that kick the scores and stuff, but it, like you look closer to goal, then you, like you, could you pick one out of the full back line that stood above the rest? You couldn't really like everybody over the four games and even the league like performed very well. And you, I think to bring it back closer, like people wouldn't have known other guys' names. Like I'd mentioned, Connor McNally was a big lad who never missed a training session. Like was on probably the players' player. Do you know? 
got on with everyone, like always trained, kept a smile on his face, but didn't get a run in the Sigerson until the last five minutes. But it was guys like him who stuck stuck with it for the year and didn't just drop off by the wayside. You know that kind of really made the team what it was. Whereas like fair enough, guys can kick the big scores and they'll get noticed. But I think it was those kind of guys like Connor and Simon McCoy ended up having a massive role in other. Edwin Murray and uh, like there's too many last to name but you know guys that rode in that weren't getting games that really were, were kind of the making of the team Absolutely and how important was the league in the run up to the season? Yeah definitely um, you compare that to the year before and we definitely didn't have as good a, a campaign like we had we were chopping and changing with teams but we kind of when we got our couple of wins um, I think we had a one or two home games in the league at the start and that kind of helped us just get um, settled and stuff so definitely we kind of at that stage we knew we had a, a team that was if we held it together after the league that we were capable of getting giving it a go like you know so um, definitely kind of gave us a bit of confidence um, mm. that we could give it a crack over the last couple of years uh, especially this year the CLC the budget for the men's guy team was 13% mm. uh, they pocketed 35,000 just for the men's GA oh. alone um, and it was twenty GA was twenty eight percent of the whole budget yeah. uh, last year alone as well. Do you think a big win like this was really important considering the amount of money that was pumped into it I compared to two years ago? Yeah. It was probably about ten or thirteen grand now, but yeah. all in all, it's a huge amount of money. Do oh, you think it yeah. deserved the win? Or? I'd I'd say definitely. You don't like you don't really realize when you're playing like the amount of stuff that goes in behind the scenes. And in fairness, we do like we get fed after training and stuff, and then you have like gear subsidized, and you're like even the weekends away. I can only imagine that the costs run up hugely on that. But yeah, I suppose it's hard to justify p- putting in such investment into something like that when um when like there's such funds going there and, and you're not getting the results but um I'd hope like, I, I'd probably like to see more probably integration between the the GA society and probably the rest the other societies and you know even even like there's a lot of you see American students or Chinese students if you got like if there was to be kind of open days where like you could bring them in and show off the culture of Ireland and bring the GA into that 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 probably the, the GA society contribute to the college more in in terms of that just to kind of Give, like make it more approachable to everyone that's probably one way I could see that they could improve but um, in terms of funding and stuff I, like it's, like there is such cost involved in running the team and like well it like would players like without meals and stuff a training it is hard because like you could be travelling home like you know guys are expected to like they'd be travelling home after training in the morning session or, and joy you know, like you're you're not getting your meal and then or whatever so so it is kind of there's a lot of things small things that and like while they're not big but they do cost like nice but yeah so i suppose it is the fun i would say is important anyway for us yeah absolutely yeah. and then finding tom uh, do you reckon tc was a football and stronghold once again after that win i think so yeah like looking at the team that's like i wouldn't say there's too many lads bare like there's a couple of guys graduating like myself and Con- well no mcgrain are still there but but um there's definitely another decent team there next year but again you know like things can happen and injuries and guys can go on placement and stuff but as of as of now you'd say there's no reason why DCU couldn't kind of build a kind of continuous uh, crack having a good crack every year at the circuit and yeah so long may it last anyway yeah. Tom Flynn thanks very much lovely thanks man cheers